sí me ha educado a mí misma, creo que me, me ha hecho aprender a amarme y a cuidarme emocionalmente, pero sobre todo sanar heridas del pasado. TLC is a program that has helped educate myself. I learned to love myself, I learned to take care of myself emotionally, but above all, um, it helped me heal wounds from the past. Somehow, like I grew up, my mom was kind of, well she definitely was in an abusive situation, and um, I don't know, I watched my father do it to countless women, and I didn't think that it would happen to me, but somehow it did, talking to my mom about the project that I worked on, she was like really surprised because she wishes that she did something because you know I hear her talk about it every day like oh my gosh I wish I did something because like I still think about your father and it's scary. Pienso que um, el video tuvo impacto porque creo que nuestras historias um, son similares. Creo que um, varias uh, nos sentimos identificados. Um, porque nos han pasado cosas quizás con nuestras familias, nuestros amigos. Um, lamentablemente hay personas, uh, como la frase anterior que, que leímos, en, eh, sobre que es difícil cambiar uh, comportamientos y, y quizá mentes, pero creo que el amor lo puede todo. I mean, it's a scary situation, but like, I feel like I have power now because I'm not like living in fear anymore. So anyway, I joined the program, learned a lot, I kind of found liberation through the experience, and I'm glad I did it. I think that the video had a very deep impact um, because a lot of us felt identified uh, with our, with each of our stories. There's um, obviously people that live their life through other people that are more comfortable with talking about experience that they had, and I feel like with this video that's a platform for those individuals who are living in fear right now, or I don't know, afraid to be themselves. So we lived uh, through very similar experiences with maybe partners or families, um, uh, law enforcement officers. And so learning to identify that, uh, we learned to believe that love um, can do it all. Thank you so much. of the other or others to engage in the sexual activity. A lack of protest or resistance does not mean consent, nor does silence mean consent. Affirmative consent must be ongoing throughout sexual activity. It can be revoked at any time. One of the first things that we did is we implemented a mandatory bystander intervention program. If you're familiar with the bringing in the bystander curriculum that emerged out of the University of New Hampshire, uh, we consulted with them. They trained a number of our folks on campus to be able to thank you for the help to be able to deliver that particular intervention, where we required every incoming student to go through a mandatory bystander intervention program. Our audience is really everybody. So we're trying to um, reach out to survivors, to let them know that we're here for them, we're supportive, and we want them to be able to feel comfortable walking in our doors. Um, our supporters, our partners, other agencies in the community, we want to reach out to them as well. Um, community members. Um, and also potential donors as well. We want them, obviously, to see us because we want their money. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to help staff um, and the college community as a whole um, do more prevention work and trying to help them realize that this is something that we really do need to help get men engaged in, um, specifically men in sports on my campus, and getting them engaged is really, really important and having them know these statistics these statistics is really critical so that they understand that it's not that stranger that jumps out of the bush in the middle of the night. Um, so education has been key in terms of trying to get this program to be successful. And we have some data. The data is encouraging. 
that there have been both attitude and behavior changes as a function of participating in that bystander intervention curriculum. The existence of a dating relationship between the persons involved or the fact of past sexual relations between them should never by itself be assumed to be an indicator of consent. So this is, in so many ways, fantastic. Um, it really tries to address those rape myths that it's a victim's fault, that you know, if you have this ongoing relationship that any sexual activity is just automatically consensual. It tries to sort of disrupt the responsibility of women to prevent their own assaults. Um, and it's like it's gender neutral in the language, but it does try to address those gender issues. It's only been around for a year and a half, but I've had contact with a couple dozen students this last year alone. So that's a couple dozen people who maybe wouldn't have gotten services if it wasn't for the program existing, which is great. And we want to share our story. We want to share why we're here, where we are, um, and the purpose. And to really create an impact on the community. Um, and the most important thing is to um, have a survivor-centered voice, right? We are a rape crisis center, and everything that we do is a survivor-centered voice. So every post that we put on any of these social media sites comes with a survivor-centered voice, and that is really important for us.